Will you please welcome Mr. Tim Barton and Mr. Johnny Depp, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> to have you both here. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, you know... Uh, yeah, it's great to have you both here, and I'm really pleased you're both here together, because uh, I know you work with other people and you, you do other movies, but when I think of your movies, or when I think of your movies, I tend to think of you as a pair. Uh, and you've been together, what, is it 20 years now that, that uh, Edward Scissorhands first brought you together? Yeah, one journalist said we'd been working together for 10 decades. <laughs> which was before film was, you know, everything like that. So I'm trying to work that out. Yeah, yeah that's a strange yeah. thing to say. Uh, was Johnny the person you had in mind for Edward Scissorhands, or was it a, a film you were writing anyway, and then you were looking around for the right person? No, I didn't, you know, I'd never seen the show he'd done, 21 Jump Street, but I knew about him, and uh, I just, after I met him, I realized he was that character, you know, somebody who, you know, he's always been sort of misperceived by looking like a, you know, poster boy, and inside there was always something different, and that's sort of what the character of Edward Scissorhands was. And yeah, so, so, I mean, you were kind of a teen idol at the time, and that TV show, you were kind of a, a heartthrob in all the teeny magazines and they stuff? Were, uh, they were working hard to process uh, some kind of uh, a character to shove down people's throats. And I was, rep I was misrepresented, really, I mean, I, you know, because as far as I was concerned, I was just an actor doing a job. You didn't enjoy that whole side of it? Well, I mean, I don't know that anyone can. It's pretty weird. You, yeah. know? you know, when you go from, like, not being able to pay your rent and then suddenly, you know, all that kind of bizarre hoopla and... So you were deliberately looking to uh, change the direction of your career and change the way people perceived you, I guess? Yeah, I wanted to... I just... I wanted the, you know, I wanted the, the road that I wanted, you know. I didn't want... Uh, I didn't want to become anyone's product, really. You know, yeah. here's what's weird. Uh, you're talking totally differently to the way I uh, expected you to, because <laughs> I haven't seen you being yourself for quite a long while, and I'm used to you either speaking like this, like a crazy person, or, oh, what a worse white chocolate. You know, it kind of... <laughs> you do those voices in the films, and here you're talking like a, a grown-up man. That's weird, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I expected it's like kind of like normally... It's like a Michael Jackson voice. <laughs> 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 But I guess you, uh, you, we don't see you being interviewed that much, and I guess that's uh, deliberate on your part. Occasionally I become a grown-up man, too. Yeah. <laughs> but you're not a, you're kind of a weird person, I imagine, though, aren't you? Because that's what, <laughs> obviously... Because I don't see you playing normal people often. I've been accused of weird, yeah. yeah I've yeah. been accused but of you weird. like being a bit weird, don't you? Well, I mean, I just like to sort of, you know, I, I prefer to go down the, the road that I that I prefer. Yeah. <laughs> He's weird. Yeah, yeah. And, and coming weird. from you, that's quite something, because you're, you're, <laughs> you're no stranger to the weird side of life, are you? Well, I mean, what's weird, you know? I mean... You uh, two are. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we got a, we got a double help in the weird. But uh, do you go to Johnny first? Because this partnership, it clearly works, and it's clearly something that you both feel comfortable with. Um, but you do, uh, you know, make other films with other people. Uh, do you prefer working with Johnny? Is it your first port of call when you have a part? Or are there certain parts where you, you don't go to him because you, you don't think it's a good mix? No, I think I always go to him if I feel the part's right and think he'd like it. And, uh, you know, also he's, you know, he's willing to try anything. And he also doesn't like looking at himself. I don't, he's never seen a movie that we've done together. You don't watch yourself back? I can't stand it. Because you're unattractive, is that it? Is that it? Well, uh, <laughs> no, really, well, you just don't like seeing yourself on the screen or you don't like the performance? Uh, what I prefer, I just prefer to walk away with the experience of the process and, and have, you know, to, just to have that and, the, and then that's plenty. I don't, should, I don't need to You should watch them, though, because some of them are pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I might, you know, I, this one I think I might... I want to see because this is... It, it's, it's Tim at his, at his, you know, utmost. He's really gone far beyond. On this one, and well, I, this I is it's a see. remarkable experience. I mean, I've seen this. This is Alice in Wonderland we're talking about now, Alice in Wonderland. And it's, um, it, it's not uh, the straightforward telling of the story as we recall it, of course. This is a, a, different, uh, a different angle on it. It's a different period, isn't it? Right. Well, I mean, I've seen there's been 20 versions of it, I guess, and they've all tried to, I, in some ways, be very literal to the stories, which are absurdist and don't really have a yeah. really strong linear. So what I liked about this was it sort of set it in a different framework, but just, you know, still the thing that always 
I remember is the Lewis Carroll characters, you know, the Hatter and the Cheshire Cat. They're just such iconic characters, yeah. and that's the thing we were focusing on. It's a, a remarkable movie. I mean, it really is a very different thing, and I, I, I genuinely I adored it, and so did my kids, I'm pleased to say. Um, but it's really quite way out there. I mean, it isn't, it isn't a kind of straightforward fairy story. It isn't like the, the cartoon Alice from years ago. Well, I mean, people they go like, well, it's darker or something, and then you had to go, this was written, what, 18, whatever, and it's like, uh, well, you know, there's something that says, drink me, eat me, you know, that you don't know what it is. It's completely politically incorrect in a certain way that the story, you know, and this was, you know, as we said, if this story were written now, it would be kind of mind-blowing today. today. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's, it's been such an inspiration for musicians, artists, and so it's just, you know, it's in the subconscious of everybody in some way. And you play the Mad Hatter as if he is somewhat mad. Um, is that, um, presumably that's a deliberate thing, you went in there hoping to capture him as a sort of, not, not a kind of insane person in a, in a depressing way, but someone who is touched by madness. Yeah, someone who's, someone who's touched by madness but confused by the madness as well. I mean, I think it's, the idea is that, you know, if you're completely crazy and you're unaware of it, you're home free. If you're completely crazy and you are aware of it, there's got to be some bit of trauma there, there's got to be some bit of damage there, you got to be, you know. So, so that, what we were trying to do is kind of, Turn him into this, uh, you know, like a like a human mood ring in a way. You know that that um, he goes from, uh, you know, severe <laughs> severe sort of depression to um, um, great levity and then you know intense rage. Kind of like people sometimes bipolar people swing from that, one extreme to another. That sort of thing. Yeah. I, I think it's um, one of your, if not your best performance ever. Wow. I think it's incredible. You. Wow. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, let's have a look. This is uh, Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> Well, you must be thrilled with the way it's turned out. Well, it's, you know, I just finished it, so you know, it's like they have to take it from your cold, dead hand. You know, this yeah. but you so must have—you've kind of literally just finished it. I mean, it's yeah, only yeah, the, yeah. the last week or two, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. I, my hands still smell like chemicals. Yeah. <laughs> it's got nothing to do with the movie. That's just. Uh... <laughs> um, how, has, uh, how have you seen each other change over this 20 year period? I mean, you've both uh, been through similar experiences in a way. You've both gone through, you were both kind of successful, but you enjoyed bigger success as a result of your time together and as other movies. You've both settled down, you've become family men. So you've been on similar journeys, but have you seen changes in each other that you didn't expect to see? Tim has to fight less for me now to get me into, into the movie. Yeah, after used to, Charlie, that was the first the time fight, the studio know. said, hey, what about, you know, Johnny, this yeah. guy, you know? But yeah, that's right. weird, because people now, they think of you as a huge star. But of course, for years, you weren't. You were in these weird, oddball movies, and they weren't necessarily a, a big opening. I think the them. definition was box office poison, was what they, <laughs> <laughs> what they used to call me. But it's so weird to think about now. And I guess it was Pirates of the Caribbean that turned that around? I think that had something to do with it, yeah. OK. Uh, how did they deal with your performance? Because, once again, this is something after the event, you say, sure, that's going to work. But at the time, I bet when you first walked out, oh, hey, what are you doing all that? What are you doing? <laughs> that's not a bad impersonation, I think. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but they must have uh, questioned that, I'm sure. They were definitely, most definitely upset, yeah. Uh, yeah. And you had sit-down chats with them about this? Oh, yeah. I mean, sitting in a, you know, in a, in a great big, uh, you know, like a giant conference room, uh, speaking with grown men about you know how many gold teeth and how many you know dangly bits from your hair. So they had a they wanted surreal. a limit on the number of dangly bits in your hair and pretty much. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. yeah, it was very strange. But you must have been confident then that you were doing it right. You must have had that belief in. Oh, I did. I mean, I you know I, I didn't do anything differently. I mean, I made choices for a character that I believed in, and I and I knew who that guy was, and and uh, so I basically just said to them, look at you know I, uh, this is. This is the guy, and, and if you don't like him, uh, you're welcome to fire me. Yeah. You, know, you can pay me. <laughs> but, uh, it's kind of a win-win situation for you, really, much, at that you know. stage. <laughs> um, but they, you know, the phenomenal success. I mean, uh, all three of them. And there's a, the fourth on the way. Is that, is that confirmed now? There is, yeah. There's a fourth on the way, and we're, we're you know, getting through the script and coming up with some That's really exciting, isn't stuff. it? Yeah, it is. Uh, and this will be the same director. Is it Gore Verbinski? This is it? a different director this time. It's, a, it's Rob Marshall, who just uh, did Nine and has done uh, Chicago. And he's a very, very, very oh, interesting okay. guy. So you didn't want to... It's going to be wanna, a musical, yeah. then, huh? He's... he's <laughs> yeah, <we're just> <laughs> musical <laughs> hits. <laughs> well, you've done the musical, of course. Sweeney Todd. And okay. who would have thought we'd seen you sing? Because when you were in a band years ago, you just played... Uh, was it guitar, guitar or bass? Guitar, guitar, yeah. So you weren't a singer on stage? Never. But you did a good Sweeney Todd. Did you see Johnny and Sweeney Todd, ladies and gentlemen? He carried a tune. He was channeling Bowie for part of that movie, I think. Uh, did, did you like doing the singing as part of the film experience? No. <laughs> no, I didn't. It made me incredibly uncomfortable. You know, 
at the, you know, to step up in front of a microphone, you know, for the first time in your life at the age of 40 or whatever, <laughs> was like pretty obtuse. Unpleasant. And now in the new film, of course, uh, Tim's encouraged you to dance on screen as well. Yes. Yeah, and it's quite some dance. Is that, presumably some of that is computer generated, the dance? No, the Futter Wacken. Yeah. No, it, it, That's the name of the dance, by the way, yeah. ladies and yeah. gentlemen. Yeah. No, but you, yeah, you've yeah. got to be. When it first occurred, I thought, "What's that going to be?" When you say he's going to fudder whack at the end, I thought, "This is going to be good." Can Vigorously. I watch this with the kids? What's yes. going to happen? <laughs> and, and it's, uh, but it's quite something. Yeah, I'm not allowed to do. The doctor's given me a month to not uh, fudder whack. Stay away from my fudder whack. You coward. <laughs> Oh, the knee, yeah. Oh, it's the knee, Johnny. <laughs> That's why. You can't dance because of the knee. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tim might be able to show you a little bit, huh? I can't make my head spin around. Yeah, yeah. Me. yeah. Um, Keith Richards, of course, appeared in the last of the Caribbean movies with yep. you. Uh, and you're huge in Marvel. You're making a film about him, aren't you? We're doing... It's a thing that we've talked about for, for a number of years now, that we finally had a moment, the two of us, to get together and, and uh, do, like, a, a, a first instalment, if you will. And so, basically, what it, all it is is exactly what Keith and I have been doing over the years, is sitting around in hotel rooms, talking, gabbing, having a drink, and we, we've documented it. So it's something we're doing together, and uh, it, we did five, five days, and it went extremely well. He was just incredible. At the time still, though, even though, I mean, obviously, you're, you're comfortable where you are and who you are, but there are times when you're sitting, I'm sitting opposite Keith Richard. Do you oh, yeah. still have that feeling? Oh, it happens all the time, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, when he starts, you know, bringing up things about, you know, the early days of the Stones and, you know, you know, being, be, being uh, you know, whisked out of hotels through laundry chutes and things like that. You just there, must be, there must be some chunks of that period that he can't remember with absolute clarity, though, I imagine. I've got to say, you know, he's got a pretty good memory <laughs> through for what he did. He's got a pretty great memory. Uh, I'm sure, like many people, when I saw the first parts of the Caribbean and realised that you were partly kind of like doing a Keith, the idea that you might be on screen together was an exciting one. Then when it finally came to be, what a great moment. Uh, here you go. Remind yourself that this is Pirates of the Caribbean, the two of them together. <laughs> Let me ask you about the, uh, the... Presumably you like the Pirates movie as well. Do you, as a director, when you see other people's work, do you sit there thinking, that's great, but I would have done this, I would have done that? No, because I know what's involved in making a film. So, no, I, I, I don't. I just worry about what I'm doing. And, uh, you know, it was great that... Uh, because his success on that made it easier for me to work with him again, you know, I didn't have to, you know. Yeah. But I'm talking. amazed because, I mean, it's a, a remarkable process and, it, and obviously when there's big money involved, which there is, for, for people to trust people like you to make something as strange as the films you tend to choose, mm -hmm. uh, that's a big risk by then. And yet you guys don't seem that flustered about it. You seem like, I'm going to do this. You have that confidence in your own vision or your own ideas. Was that always the case, Tim? Yeah, I mean, it's confidence or stupidity or just ignorance <laughs> or whatever, but it's just kind of the desire to make what we wanted. And, and I've been lucky from the very beginning to, you know, from, you know, scissor hands, even though they didn't really want to do it, but, you know, after Batman, I got the chance to kind of just do a low budget kind of thing. So I've been had the chance to, you know, do the things I've wanted to do. You're both very successful men working in an industry which is primarily an American industry. So, and yet you both choose to live elsewhere. You, you live over here. Uh, more yes. or less full time, as far as I know, and you live mainly in France. Is that right, Johnny? Yeah, in France, but also just you know, it's a pretty transient existence. Here. Why? Uh, why is your main base in France then? Why did you choose France and not England? What, what France has done for me really is like you know, at least living in Europe has given me uh, uh, the opportunity for real uh, simplicity as far as as far as you know, raising a family, being a dad. You know, you, when we go down to our place in the south, there's no, you know, there's no discussion, there's no movie talk, there's no nothing. It's just, you know, literally simple and, and uh, free. I guess in Los Angeles, it's so much a kind of, the, the industry dominates the whole town, that even I mean, schools and even restaurants, when you go out, it's always there. Everywhere you go. I mean, everywhere you go. And you like, you like a glass of wine occasionally, don't you, Johnny? I don't mind it. Okay. I don't mind uh, it. <laughs> and you have your own, uh, your own vineyard, is that right? I don't. I you don't. don't. You know, they were, the French won't allow it. I thought you had a vineyard. They don't want me to have a vineyard. Okay, and this is because you just you, you wouldn't be able to grow it. Uh, they just want you to keep drinking their I was stuff. I'd probably never leave. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, do you guys uh, hang out together or see each other much when you're not working together? I mean, we've talked about about your your home life. Uh, you're here uh, in the UK now. You're living with Helen, as you said, yeah. Helen Bonham Carter, and you have uh, two children. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful children. Uh, do you guys sort of go see each other much? Do you hang out? Do you socialise? Do you, do you bond? Do you go drinking, bowling? Do you go fishing? Do you do any of those kind of shopping? I forgot bowling. ice dancing. And yeah. Ice dancing. Synchronised yeah. swimming. Synchronised yeah. swimming. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, no. I mean, when we work, we see each other all the time. Yeah. Well, when, I mean, if we happen to be in the same place or something like that. We'll do you, do you holiday together ever? 
Oh. I don't even holiday with my own family, so I'd <laughs> <laughs> really that. be in trouble if I holiday well, you know, with him. Yeah, but that's, that's, it's just a phone call Jim. away, Tim. Just phone him up and say, hey, we're thinking of going to Santa Park or somewhere. What are you doing? I'm sorry, holiday <laughs> kids. I'm off to the Bahamas with Joey. No, I'm not yeah. saying you should go alone with him and his family and leave yours at home. I'm saying both groups of family book, you'd probably get a better rate and go and stay somewhere <laughs> again. <laughs> Um, but I imagine it would be kind of like, uh, not, not like working, but it would be a continuation of, of work if you were away together. You would find yourself talking about those kind of things. Well, we'd probably develop like strange things like, you know, like Martin Landau's Hot Tub. Oh, yeah, we, like that. Yeah, TV we... shows. We've dreamed up TV shows. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Martin Landau, of course, worked with you both in, in the Ed Wood movie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what, what was the idea for the Hot Dog we'll TV show? just have a, like a, a talk, talk show. show. We might want to do it, but within a hot tub. Wherever the guest comes in, the guest comes in the hot tub. naked in the hot tub. Yeah. Well, I'm up for it. <laughs> uh, so when you uh, sit down together, or when you pitch on it to Johnny, do you see pretty much eye to eye? Because it's unusual that uh, a couple who've worked together on so many films are still friendly, are still prepared to work together. I mean, most, you know, most directors I know, eventually, they hit a wall with their, with their leading actors and vice versa. You're on the same page pretty much all the time? Yeah, I mean, oddly, like, you know, like, even... When it comes down to, you know, script notes and stuff like that, if we'll sit down and talk about the character or talk about a scene and uh, we'll compare script notes, and there, there have been times when, when they've been, like, identical, you know, or, or, or the notes on the page. Um, and then the approach to the character, like, with the Mad Hatter, for example, I had this weird little uh, watercolor that I'd done of what I thought he should look like, and then I brought it to Tim, and then Tim had his drawings, and it was like, they, they were very, very close, you know. So, and how, and how is Tim as a director? How communicative is he as a director? Because I'm led to believe that you're not the most verbal director when it comes to giving notes and advice and guidance on, on set. Yeah, he isn't, but I mean, at the same time, he knows exactly what he wants, and there's, a, there's an incredible shorthand that somehow developed or actually happened right away on Edward Scissorhands, where it's, it could literally be, you know, he could turn his head that way or kind of... You know, do something with his hands and you go, oh, yeah, yeah, I get it. You'd know what he meant. I know, I know what he So wants. almost like the way uh, very close family members communicate, or twins, you kind of know what each other's... They must be kind of frustrating for the people who are left out. Do they pretend they know what you want and then get it tragically wrong sometimes? Well, there was a lot recently where people were just... They, we just heard you guys talking. We didn't know what the f you guys were talking <laughs> about for like half an hour, you know? It was yeah. like... A group, a group came up to me and said that. He said, I just listened to you and Tim speak have this conversation, he says, I have no idea what you were talking about. <laughs> uh, That's why it takes two of us to go on a talk show, because maybe one <laughs> sentence will come out. Together, yeah, yeah. we'll get some sense out of it. Uh, I read uh, a couple of people who work with you, I guess they're the producer behind the scene, uh, they, they believe that uh, the characters you play on screen are kind of Tim on screen. You're like his alter ego on screen. And, and you don't see it that way, is that right? No, I, mean, I think you, as you, when you do something, you try to, you know, see make it yourself but the thing is you know you just put a little bit of that in there because the actors are the ones doing it so that's why it's a collaboration i mean he's the one that's doing it so you know he's got a lot of him in there there's maybe some things that i feel in there and you know that's what the artistic collaboration is all about so. but do you think that you're kind of acting out his personality on screen at any of the time no no i mean I, no not really i mean i think you know i'm basically just trying not to embarrass him that's my job, yeah. you know, <laughs> embarrass people. Uh, let me ask you about some of the people you work with, because uh, how amazing it must have been to work with Marlon Brando. Mm. I mean, that must have been, he must have been someone you grew up admiring. I would have oh, thought. yeah, he was, he was incredible. I mean, he became, um, he became a great uh, mentor, a great friend, a great uh, uh, source of knowledge. He was, he was incredibly generous and supportive with me. I, I, uh, you couldn't ask for a better... Um, did he uh, offer advice, or did you seek advice from him as a young actor? He would offer advice. He would, he would offer advice to me. You know, he, you know, if I, if he saw me do a, a, a talk show or something like that. There was one time I did a talk show and I, the lady asked me about my kids or something, and I said, "Oh, they're great." You know, my kids. And he called me immediately afterwards and said, "You can't talk about your kids. Don't do it." You know, and he really like laid into me about so it. So he had specific ideas of what you shouldn't, shouldn't yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. He just said, "Don't talk about your kids." Man. Don't, don't talk about your kids. Um, you worked with him on the Don Juan movie, of course. Yeah. Um, when you get to work with someone like that, are you still someone who sort of seeks them out as a friend almost? I mean, do you want to sort of like hang out with them? Do you want to be, are you impressed in a sort of fan way? Or is it just business or where do you kind of overcome all that? No, I mean, there was, I mean, the, the, you know, initially when you meet someone as, as sort of, 
you know, a legend. I mean, a, you know, the, this kind of legend, this this myth. Um, no, you, there is a part of you that's, yeah, but deeply sort of uh, uh, stupefied. Slightly but, intimidated. Yeah, but at the same time, he 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 made me feel so comfortable, and um, and sort of wouldn't let you go. He wouldn't let you go in that direction. So after a while, this you know Marlon Brando just became Marlon. Yeah, and and, uh, and he became you know one of the funniest humans I've ever known. You know? It must be, and for you working with when you're directing, I guess you can't let say it's your first day with Jack Nicholson in the Batman movie. You can't let that be Jack Nicholson to you. You can't be intimidated by him. No, no, and it's but it's great because movies making movies is quite surreal. So it's just another surreal moment. And and uh, no, I've been lucky. I mean, the only one that almost ever beat me up was Jack Palance, <laughs> and because he, I just gave a very simple direction, walk out of the bathroom. It was the first shot of that movie. Please just come out of the bathroom. Ooh, I've done over a hundred movies. <laughs> You've only done two. <laughs> and he almost beat me up right there on the spot. But had you given him specific instructions no, just walk about the, out bathroom. Of the bathroom? He no. didn't like that. He didn't even no, want to no. do that. I think he came ready to try and exert his will yeah. on you. I think that was obviously the case there. He's bigger than I was. But he, uh, he did the one arm press ups, didn't he? At the, exactly. uh, so he could have kicked your ass very easily, didn't he? Yeah. 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 <laughs> but you, you used to be a bit wild. I don't know if ever you, you were you know, physical like that, but you used to be a bit wild. And that's kind of gone now. You've, you've sorted all that out, or you, you, you just hide it a bit deeper? Yeah, I had it a bit deeper than that. <laughs> <laughs> but you never, do you ever cut loose? Or what kind of a drunk are you, Johnny? What kind of a drunk? Yeah. Well, constant. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> are, you a, are you a friendly kind of guy, a drunk, or do you get a little bit confused? Or, what do you, or you sleep? What do you do when no, you No, it when doesn't you... confuse me. <laughs> no, it makes me happy. Uh, and you're not really that big a drinker, are you? When I'm with him, I am. Yeah. You have to keep up. <laughs> Um, OK, let me ask you about your next project, because you're working together again soon. I don't know if it's your very next movie. Is it the next project you're doing is together, or you have other stuff in between? No, there's, there's, there's a couple other things uh, I have, and then, and then Tim and I are working on you know, developing this other thing. That we and this is, this is, is it going to be The House of Dark Shadows, is that right? Yeah, yeah Dark Shadows, okay. yeah. Which is well, now, that wasn't that well known over here. No. I don't think it, but it was a really yeah. weird kind of cult thing in America. Yeah, it was on it? TV in the afternoon. It was, like a, it was like a supernatural soap opera that, you know, the kid, we'd all race home to see. It was on black and white, like in the afternoon, and it was just the weirdest vibe of any mo show I've ever seen. Yeah, a gothic soap opera. Yeah. And Weird. so it was kind of like uh, domestic uh, and, and, and romantic entanglements. And then there was a vampire involved as well, is that yeah. right? Yeah, but there, and there was some of the worst camera moves that you've ever seen yeah. in your whole life. I mean, and if. Strangely, a lot of flies landing on actors' faces and then still <laughs> just trying to act through it. It was amazing. But are you going to try and do that? Are you going to try and make fly, it look... Yeah, we're going to fill the room with flies and then yeah. make the actors not pretend that they're there. Do you ever... If you, uh, if you go to Johnny with an idea, has he ever said no to you for anything? Has there ever been a time when you've wanted him to do something? I mean, we know you've had him fudder whacking now. Yeah. And you, you made him... Well, obviously, he had to sing for Sweeney Todd. But have there been things that you haven't been comfortable doing? Or are you kind of open There's to any challenge? Him. I just always... I, know, I, just, I mean, I always fear the, that he's going to come up with something that just makes me so uncomfortable. Like, mostly like a dance... Some kind of dance yeah. thing, you know? But you wouldn't accept a role if it was a kind of a, a straightforward leading man role, would you? Well, it depends, I suppose. I mean, it depends on the, on the character, you know? I mean, if there's something, if there's something underneath that might be... Might be interesting, or maybe there's a different way to attack it, or something like that. So, if it was, if there was, well, I guess something for you to get your teeth in, but you wouldn't do what we consider a romantic comedy necessarily, or would you? Oh no, I couldn't do that. No. Jesus, <laughs> I really couldn't. I'd be, I mean, I'd be a wreck. So I bet you get asked, don't you? <laughs> well, I mean, I've been asked a couple of times, but it's just not my. Uh, I couldn't do it. <laughs> there's no way. Yeah. <laughs> but you're still, you could be made to look presentable enough even now. <laughs> If we got rid of what, whatever the hell that is, you know. <laughs> we're teetering. Uh, we're, we're, we could be teetering on the brink here. Uh, how long do you think this so far very successful and obviously kind of on a personal level, very satisfying relationship will last? You, you want to carry on making movies for as long as you both can, or do you have a kind of a, a, a game plan? Well, as long as he keeps not watching the movies we've made together, <laughs> there's still a chance we'll work together. I think. <laughs> what about you, Johnny? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, 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 you know, basically just I wait for the phone call, and if it comes, great, you know. I'm, I'm, Is he your favourite director to work with? Oh, of course. I mean, it's like going home for me, you know. It's, it's, uh, it's. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you got very emotional. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
I've heard him say that about Rosette every Fair. director he's worked with. He just says, yeah, it's like coming home. That's what he says. Uh, great to have you both here. Uh, the movie opens next Friday, ladies and gentlemen, Alice in Wonderland. I hope everyone gets the chance to see it on a big screen in 3D because yeah, it's... That's uh, the way it should be seen. It's amazing. Thank you. It's very... It's almost as good as Avatar. Um, it's, a... <laughs> <laughs> it's great to have you both here. Ladies and gentlemen, will you join me in thank saying thank you to Mr Timber and to Mr Johnny Depp? Thank you. 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 Thank you.